ball to the table that you were like, well, I didn't expect yeah. this UFC guy to come and kind of have this this skill or, or this talent? Crap saw, right? I expected an awkward guy, and I got an awkward guy. You know, I, um, I, 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 I don't expect a uh, guy who just started boxing to have all the proper fundamentals, but he knows what he wants to do and how he wants to do it. And that's kind of uh, kind of how I got to put it, you know, until, uh, until after training camp's over, we can't, really, we can't really break down too much tactics. Tell me, how much would you like Connor can't help you to broadcast the feedback? Does he give you more insight? Does he give you now you understand? I think on fight night, because... By that point, they're already in their respective locker rooms. You know, it'll be more fun to talk more about it because at that point, I'll be more open to talk about, you know, his, his tactics and a little bit of what to expect and whatnot. Um, but until then, you know, I just don't think it's the, it's the right ethics to uh, to discuss tactics and discuss, you know, things he's doing in camp, you know, because he's he's trying to be successful with what he's doing. Now, that said, I've been talking to a lot of people in boxing. Everybody respects you. Everybody likes you. They have good things. But they say, if he was Brian McGregor, we would say nothing but good things. I don't think I'm saying anything good or bad. I mean, I'm trying to call it down the middle. You know? um, I don't want anybody to think of, think that I'm, I got all praises for him. But at the same time, I don't want anybody to think that I have all praises for him either. You know, I'm trying to basically break it down to you as best I can. But I'm not really. If you look at my entire career, I, I was a professional boxer for almost 16 years. Have I ever spoken about boxing? In, I was sparring in the gym in any of my interviews. I mean, you can you can Google my name and sparring. I don't think I've ever discussed sparring. Ever, ever, ever. And I've sparred with some of the best fighters in the world, you know? So so I don't think I've ever discussed sparring at, at all in my, in my life, in my career. So it's not like I, I, I got here and all of a sudden people are going to expect something I've done before. This is what I've always done. I've, I've, I've always kept sparring in the gym. So it's just my, it's just my style. It's just uh, what I prefer to do. And obviously for an even, an even bigger event, I think it's all the more important to, and, and to, to be ethical and be, do the correct thing and then keep it in the gym. Now you can't talk about the sparring itself. What about that pay, Paulie? What's that pay look like? We negotiated something. It's good. Uh, Paulie, tell me about Saddam Ali's uh, upcoming fight tomorrow night. Uh, what, what, what would it take for him to be a, a, a top welterweight contender? I think uh, Saddam has a, uh, has a pretty tough fight. Uh, Johan Perez is not a, is not a cakewalk kind of guy. Uh, but, you know, uh, I think Saddam, at his best, is, has enough to even shut him out, maybe stop him late, but Johan's a tough guy. I think Saddam has the skills to really dazzle Johan, and, and uh, Saddam has a lot of skills. He just doesn't get a lot of credit for it. You know, he's been kind of under the radar, but I think Saddam, if he's at his best, I can see it being like a 99-91, uh, 190, 190 type of fight, you know? Uh, and, and Johan's not a bad fighter, but I just think Saddam has more speed, more power, and just a better overall power style than Johan. Who's a better trash talker, Conor McGregor or Adrian Broner? Um, pretty close. Close. Close, man. Good, Jim. What's going on, man? You good? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Good to see you, man. Um, um, I don't know. It's close. Close. It's close, man. Yeah, yeah. They're both really good trash talkers. It will be an, it will be an entertaining trash talking festival. <laughs> what about Mayweather and AB? Who wins that one? Um, I think right now AB wins it. AB. Or what is good? Yeah. Floyd's a little older. He's more chill. You know what I mean, like. Don't get me wrong, Floyd gave as good as he got at the press conference, I thought, you know? But also, though, Floyd had the advantage of going second every time, you know? But it, those press conferences were really entertaining for me. People are going to have mixed emotions about them, but for me, they sold the hell out of that fight. You know, they were, they, it, was, I, it, was, it was fun being on that press tour, man. It was, what was your you know, favorite moment from the press tour? Um, I mean, Toronto, it's the greatest press conference I've been to in my life, you know? Um, it was so loud, you couldn't hear yourself think. I mean, it, I, I've been to fights that weren't that loud, you know? Um, and they were really going back and forth at each other, you know, drawing at each other with some good stuff. Uh, I think they both got really creative. Uh, I think Toronto was like the pinnacle. Then after Toronto, it kind of started sinking down and ran out of ideas and they had to come up with new ideas, you know. Molly, the first time you met McGregor, given the history that he talks smack, you talk smack, was it awkward or was it like, hey, we're professionals, we're cool? Or... I mean, it was just normal, you know. Um, I walked in the gym, he said, what's up? When we got in there, we sparred. A lot of trash talking, a lot of stuff. And then he was, he was pretty cool after, you know. But we just sparred the one day, so so uh, um, so far we did done the one day. So we'll see how the rest of the camp goes. I'm supposed to go back one day and we'll see. How You've been see. in boxing gym your whole life. Mm -hmm. What's it to be around MMA, UFC? Is it different in the gym, like the vibe, the atmosphere? Is it more serious? Is it more loose? Is it okay. is the music? Is it the same? No, yeah, I mean, it's a boxing training camp, so. He's doing his thing. I'm only, I'm only seeing him on sparring days, really. You know, like I'm not, and I'm only seeing him 
I'm only sparred the one day. So, I mean, for me, it's a training camp without making weight. For me, it's a training camp without the pressure. You know, for me, it's a training camp without having to make sure that I'm on, on my P's and Q's every single day, trying to get as sharp as I can by fight night. You know, so for me, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a different feeling for a training camp that I've ever had before. But uh, you know, Connor's working very hard and he's focused, and I see him. Is he the same person off camera as he is on camera? He's pretty chill, but. Um, you always, you're always a person that has that edge about you when you're, um, when you're in this life, and you're in this life at that level. So I don't think the edge ever totally comes off, but he's definitely much more chill. He's training at the UFC facility, right? Yes. What's UFC. that? What's that like there? It's cool. A lot of, uh, yeah. Nobody's getting in. I'll tell you that. They got a gated community. It's like a gate. It's like a gated, closed door. And um, you know, then inside the gym itself, he has a private section inside the gym, inside the UFC facility that. You know, he only allows people that he allows in, in there and not. So besides getting onto the, onto the property is hard, then getting inside the part of the gym that he's training is also hard. And so, so you know, it's, uh, it's uh, four knocks. Yeah. <laughs> Put in a good word for fight height. <laughs> 49 have tried, 49 have failed. Yeah. We're number 15 have tried. He's gonna try. We'll see. You know, we'll see how it goes. I mean, listen. You know, if I, if you, I think you'd be stupid not to be for me whether to fight. I think the fight has to play itself out. You know, uh, I think even Conor McGregor knows. You know, he's up against it in the fight. But, you know, you're uh, you're focusing on what you need to do in your game plan. You're not focusing on how many people have tried and failed. If you're Conor McGregor, you're focusing on it. you're the guy that has to try to beat him right now. You know, it's not about anything in the past. It's not about any of the past results. The other results cannot get in the ring for you and, and fight. You know, not, none of that matters. What matters is. 36 minutes of action on, on August 26th. And that, if I'm Conor McGregor, that's how I'm thinking about it. I'm sure that's how Conor's thinking about it. So you, does it surprise you? Everything you've done in boxing, you fought everybody except me with Pacquiao. You're getting more attention from this sparring session than anything you've ever done in boxing. Yeah, in a lot of ways, this is um, a pretty big, like, pretty big um, attention I'm getting because I'm, I'm involved with this fight in so many different ways. I'm involved with this fight in the, in the commentating part of it. I was involved in the, in the press tour covering the press tour, then I'm involved in, uh, as a sparring partner for McGregor. So I'm constantly involved in this huge promotion on, on every level. So it's been a little bit different. I mean, you know, I don't know if, uh, if Connor did this thinking about this, if, if he's, if he, because Connor is a, a marketing genius, you know. Uh, he, I, I think, you know, he, he, sometimes he thinks of this kind of stuff because the reality of it is they called me to spar last, uh, last week and I told them that I was going to have to leave for this week for the Brona Garcia fight, so it was probably easier if they just brought me in after Brona Garcia. But they said no, they wanted me in that week. It turned out they only used me one day. They only, they used, we sparred Thursday, we did not box again Saturday like we were supposed to. So, so for me, I started thinking, did they bring me into work, or is the main reason they brought me in is to kind of create more of a buzz around the training camp, create more of a buzz around the fight. You know, one kind of, one, one, one man watches the other, so to speak, created more of a, a buzz around the training camp, created more of a buzz around the fight. But we will see when I get back to camp on Monday, but I was literally brought in just for one night uh, last week, and then Saturday I uh, was not put on the spot to schedule. So you, you may have may have answered this already. I got in late, so excuse me if you did. But um, you described his power as being above average, and, and that kind of set the MMA world off. Like, you know, they were kind of shocked that you said that. C can you kind of elaborate on like what you mean when you talk about the difference between above average and, and then one hitter quitter power? Um, yeah, he's. I think I think I think Conor has talent, gloves. He can get your attention. And he may be able to rock you, even put you down. Anybody can knock you out cold in one shot. It matter, believe it or not, even I have two one punch knockouts on my record. You know what I mean? So, so anybody can knock you out uh, with one shot. If they hit you on the button, they hit you right. I think Connor's power is the kind of power that he can knock you out cold if he hits you one shot, but most likely he won't. You know, but but if he hits you with one shot and it catches you on the button with ten ounce gloves, even if it won't most likely knock you out cold, it probably rocks you, gets your attention in the very least, um, lets you realize you don't want to get hit with that again. It's not oh my god power. Oh my god power is like Golovkin power to me. Or Amir Mom power. I spot Amir Mom even sparring gloves where, where you get hit and you're like, ugh. You know, like with little gloves, you're definitely going down. With big gloves, you're probably thinking, yo, I still don't want to feel that. You know, it's not, it wasn't that kind of power, you know, and then, and I'm not going to make shit up just because people want to hear it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, if he had that kind of power, listen, at the end of the day, the mixed martial arts fans and the mixed martial arts media were the ones that wanted to know more than anybody about his power. So now if, I, if I'm going to sit here answering that question, you can't get offended when I answer. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, just because it wasn't what you wanted to hear, 
or does it mean it, 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 that, it, that now all of a sudden like you have to get offended? A fact is a fact. Connor's power is definitely respectable power. Connor's power, I, and I'm comparing it only with 16 ounce gloves. So I'm not comparing it to Cotto because I fought him with eight ounce gloves. I'm not comparing it to Han because I fought him with eight ounce gloves. I'm comparing it to everybody I've sparred with 16 ounce gloves in the gym. And I know what all my God power is throughout the 16, even with despite 16 ounce gloves. And I know what above average power. And I don't want even no power and regular power. You know, Connor has pop that you have to respect. I'll give that. And that's about where it ends. That's it. And, and, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think there's well, there's nothing wrong. I can't just pull my head out and say, oh, hit me. You know, it, it's not that kind of thing, you know, because he hits hard enough, you know. But at the same time, I sparred at me your mom for a year of my life when I was training out of Miami. And literally, some right hands I took from that kid had me, had I sent a shockwave from my, the top of my head to the bottom of my toes. You know what I'm saying? So, so it never went down, by the way. But, but what I'm saying is you still recognize power when it's there, when you feel it. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's a smaller guy than, than Connor, by the way. You know, So, so it doesn't mean just because you don't have that kind of power, you shouldn't be respected. No, it doesn't mean that at all. So you can't take that as, as, as you shouldn't be respected. Because Connor's power is definitely something you have to respect. It's just not... Oh my God, power! And oh my God, power in reality is very rare. Even among the fight fraternity, oh my God, power is rare. I'll be honest, with you. it's just the way it is. Tony, is there anything you told him in trash talk that stunned him? That that kind of like made him laugh in the middle of sparring? Nah, we just kind of went back and forth. You know, half the time it was making it wasn't even probably wasn't even making any sense. You know, like we were just going going back and forth trying to trying to one up each other. It was just good work. You know, Connor's a hard worker. He's a trash talk, but he's a hard worker. How much are the gloves going to impact? I was talking to Gerald Miller. Who you know? Who actually fought in K1 and, and has been inside the cage, and, and he said the gloves actually do impact the power, and you have to kind of learn how to punch differently using you know 10 ounce gloves or 8 ounce gloves. Well, I think when you yeah when you have mittens as opposed to fingers out, you know, glove, boxing gloves are mittens, you know, uh, right, man made gloves you have your fingers out. I think you'll probably you, you probably have to make a different kind of fist. You know, yeah. I think it's easier to make a fist with with boxing gloves on, those mittens, because a lot of times it's just easier, they, they form to your fist, and you're able to make a better fist, ball up a better fist. Um, I mean, I've seen scientific evidence that, honestly, the the, the, the power is very, very different. You know what I mean? I mean, it's very, not very different, it's very little to separate the power. You know, it's just a matter of knowing how to deliver the blow. Mixed martial arts, a lot of guys aren't be able to sit on their shots, you know, because they can't sit on their shots because they're gonna get their leg kicked out, you know? So I think it's just a matter of learning how to deliver the blow and deliver the power properly. And uh, Connor's working on it. Connor's working hard in camp, but he's working on it. Holy, um, so boxing versus uh, MMA, are we gonna see just more of a trend moving forward after the McGregor Mayweather fight? Or is this just a one and done deal business move? I think it depends on the result Connor gets. And if it, and depending on the result, also how he gets the result. I think, I think Connor kind of leads the way here. I think if Connor gets a result or Connor even does well in the fight, um, I think it, it, it creates more curiosity about this kind of thing, and maybe you'll see it more in the future. If this fight winds up being a fiasco, then it was probably a one and done. You know, it, 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 well, it, I think Connor kind of has the power to, to direct the future of these kind of matchups. But I think they're very interesting. Uh, I think the, the promotion and the, the hype everything's been getting throughout, uh, throughout this whole buildup shows that there's a ton of interest in this kind of a fight and then there may be a ton of interest in this kind of fight in the future but i think a, a decent result even if connor doesn't win i think getting a decent result a decent fight out of it um, i think is very important if you're going if you're going to um, do this again Tony, are you getting tickets from connor tickets from showtime tickets from floyd i don't know right now i have no tickets so people are hitting you up though i'm sure yeah, yeah. What, do they, what do they ask you when they hit you up <laughs> they ask me where they can get tickets some actually have the audacity to ask me for free tickets, uh, and, some ask me how, and some ask me how they can buy the tickets, you know, so we'll see. Thank God I'm in. Thank God for Showtime. Paulie, what's your reaction to the rumor of uh, Tim Bradley potentially retiring? Uh, I think Tim has had a great career, and I think Tim has earned the right to decide when he wants to retire, how he wants to retire, and he doesn't have to answer anybody. So. I think fans will always kind of miss a fighter that they, they had fun watching throughout his career. I think there's always, you know, there's always a nostalgia part of it when you finally see a fighter retire and you've watched him for so many years and he's given fun nights that you've been able to enjoy. You know, it's part of your memory book it's, and it's part of your, the memories you have in the sport, you know. So I think there's a there's a, a part of, of, of some fans that are always, you know, will be sad to see some fighters go. But if you really care about the fighter, you know, you'll know it's, uh, it's his decision and you'll know that, uh, you know, he, a guy like Tim Bradley has earned the right to walk away when he wants to walk away. Even if, of course, you know, as a fan, you'll be missed. Do you think that, you know, 
you you were smart in the way that you know your career progressed and how you kind of even mixed in with commentating. Do you think with Tim that you know despite him earning the right to retire, that he's still kind of leaving money on the table? There's a lot of desirable matchups to be made at the 147 and even the 54 division. It's not always about money. You know? um, Sometimes, yeah, you leave money on the table. It's not always about money. Um, it's, it's a lot of factors come into play. You know, and sometimes when when the desire to bite down hard, the desire to be willing to be hurt uh, goes away from you, not even money can bring that back. You know, so especially when, you, when you've got a comfortable life and you, you're happy with your family, you love your family, and you're just happy with where you put your where boxing put you in, and put you in your life. And if if, um, if Tim if uh, Tim is in a place in his life where he's comfortable and he's happy. And uh, that to me, that's more important than money on the table because he's been through a lot of tough fights. What's what's the most difficult thing to walk away from? I mean, you know what it's like. Is is oh. it is it the crowd reaction? Is it just the training camp, being around friends and whatnot? The ego, mm. the egos. You know, it, boxing is an ego feeder. You know, uh, knowing you'll never have to, you'll never be able to feel that kind of rush again. You'll never, nothing will ever duplicate it again. You know, people ask me all the time, oh, you, but you're being such a great commentator. That, that's a living. It's not a rush job, though. That's not an ego rush. You know what I mean? Everybody, any commentator that feels an ego from commentating has a problem because I, I would like to tell them that no matter what you feel out here, buddy, there's nothing, nothing you will ever feel out here that will even come close to what those guys are feeling in there. So let go of the ego. You know what I mean? Because there is no, you can never have ego. It's nothing that will feed your ego. Being in the media, I don't care what network you work for, if you work for ESPN or Fox or whatever, one of the big networks and you want to feel like you're cool, or if you want to uh, work for one of the big TV networks and you want to feel like you're cool, because it doesn't matter, bro. You are still nothing as far as what you feel, the edge and the rush you feel, will, it will always pale in comparison to what those guys feel in the ring. So I always feel like, you know, you just move on with the next part of your life. It's hard to let it go sometimes, but uh, you have to feel the same that you were even able to feel it. Most people will never be able to feel it. Is it the edge and the rush of the crowd or is it the edge and the rush of the actual fight? The combination of everything. The rush of the fight, the danger of the fight, the rush, the ego of being in a fight and the crowd involved, that's, that's ego, that's a rush. Um, you know, uh, it's everything, it's everything. You know, it, it, it's hard to describe, but yeah, it's a... Is there anything that you've done, you know, whether it's jump out of an airplane or anything like that, that that's come close to that? I'll never jump out of no planes. <laughs> but, um, Why not? No. It's not like my life. <laughs> um, no, uh, nothing ever, nothing I've done ever can come close. Nothing, nothing, will, nothing can come close and nothing will ever come close. Not for me. I've even done acting. And acting, when they say action, everybody has to be quiet. There's no rush. <laughs> you're, with, you're within your own mind, and it's fun. But you're within your own mind. There's no rush. Everybody, as a matter of fact, it's the opposite. Everybody has to be quiet. You know, uh, in, in, in the stadium or in an arena, the rush is all for you. you know, and it's loud for you. Where do you place Barry McGregor in the highlights of your career? You were in the MMM, uh, what, Eminem, Eminem song, if I'm not mistaken. You mentioned your name. It rhymes with something. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I mean, is it Spartan Connor like one of those moments? It's one of those things that I'll keep in my memory book. You know, I have, I have a lot of cool memories from boxing, you know. Um, and it's just one of those things that I'll be able to look back on and say, hey, I, was, I, I was able to be part of one last training camp even after I retired, you know, and uh, I was able to take part in something pretty cool. Uh, just like I was able to take part in a lot of cool stuff during my career, you know, a lot of cool stuff happened during my career, you know. And I hope more cool stuff even happens even in the years to come, you know. I'm, I hope that uh, the story's not done just because I'm not fighting anymore. So you just have breakfast? What's next for you today? Um, this is probably my lunch, but uh, okay. But uh, no, we're gonna go work the weigh-in, and we're gonna go do my podcast from the weigh-in. We got a, my, my 100th episode of my right. podcast. For, uh, thanks. We actually reached 100. Uh, today is my 100th episode of so me and Peter Cards. Okay, we're gonna be doing an episode from the weigh-in today. So tell people where to find it if they want to hear the podcast. It is popular. We're, we're trying to break off and, and be on our own, but right now you can find us on iTunes. Uh, play that it, and uh, it's on the Showtime app. Uh, Box and stuff, pulling lines from Brooklyn to the world. People love it. Yeah, we're trying to. We just gotta let more people know about it. Hey, Paulie, how, how uh, real was the power on the trigger? It was okay. It was good. Yeah, it was. It was fine. You know, it was respectable. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't uh, out of this world, but it was something you respect. You know? And does he come in from ad, uh, very odd angles? Um. I wouldn't say odd angles. Mm -hmm. I think it's just more awkwardness than odd angles. I think, uh, you know, uh, I, wouldn't, 
I wouldn't call them odd angles. Right. That, that's a bit, that's a bit uh, extreme, but there's an awkwardness to style and the way he sets up shots. I, I can't get really get into the tactical stuff like that. He knows what he's doing. You know, he knows how he wants to do it. He's not, he's not a dummy. You know, he's, right. not, he's not just doing stuff just to do it. You know, he's, he's a method to always do it. And now that you sparred with him, do you see a completely different approach with Conor McGregor towards Floyd Mayweather? Do you think it'd be a little more competitive in the early rounds? Um, I, I, it's not for me to say. Right. You know, I, uh, I think, uh, I think there's uh, that's going to be between them to, to decide that. You know, it's, it's not for me to really to decide uh, how competitive it's going to be or what, it, or what it's going to be. You know, I've, I've been in the room with Conor, and I think he's going to continue to improve over the next month. So we'll see. Overall, we're impressed about. You know, uh, I didn't expect the guy to see a guy who's is coming into boxing and uh, is going to be like relatively like a, a, a textbook boxer, you know, and I knew I wasn't going to see that. So I knew I was going to see some kind of uh, weird movements and awkwardness and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and and something a bit different in his attack. And sure, that's what uh, that's what we saw. But I, I can't give you the, the, the ins and outs of that because uh, the effectiveness of how he does it is something he's still working on. And uh, we'll see. You feel like back. a White House spokesperson that has to like be so yeah. careful of what you yeah. answer. Yeah. You don't say something wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Are you flying back after this, right? To go spot? Flying back one day, yeah. Yeah, I'll we'll be back on Monday. So we'll see. We'll see how that works. What are your thoughts on Broner Garcia? How do you see that breaking? If you can break it down for us. Um, I think it's a good fight. You know, I think it's two guys that got to this point in their careers successfully, but they got there fighting in very different styles. So I think the style clash and then the opposite styles they have they both know how to be successful using their styles will make for a good fight because now it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a textbook fundamental boxer against an athletic kind of boxer but they're both good at what they do and they both have power so it's fun Were you a little stunned when uh, Broner came in as the underdog and Mikey Garcia the overwhelming favorite? Um, I, I didn't really give that a lot of thought right. you know, uh, it's the kind of fight where anybody can win so I, I didn't. it's not the kind of fight where you're looking at the favorite and the underdog and say Oh wow, you know, it's this guy's favorite, this guy's underdog, you know. I think somebody has to be a favorite and somebody has to be an underdog in every fight. So, you know, that's the same case, thing, same thing in this fight, but it doesn't, doesn't mean the other guy can't win because they're both good enough fighters to beat each other. Yo, Bro Broner, Broner said since you're helping out Connor, he's gotta go help uh, Big Bro with, with a little bit of sparring. Money. <laughs> yeah. he, he gotta he gotta counter what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah man, I, I ain't mad at him. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but, Cody, is that an apartment, a condo, a brand new Mercedes? <laughs> no, that's just, that's just a watch, man. Just tells time. That's okay, not yeah. just a watch. <laughs> that's like saying that's just a necklace. <laughs> Look at my watch, where it is. <laughs> it must be nice to be able to say, ah, that's just a watch. <laughs> <laughs> Message to your fans? Uh, I'm just checking out on my social media at Paul Malangi. Uh, Instagram and uh, Twitter, and uh, check me out on uh, the podcast, uh, iTunes, play that, uh, play that it. Uh, Book into the world, Paul and Malanji. Book into the world is on the Showtime Boxing app, and uh, we'll uh, we'll try to broadcast it out more and more. Check us out. Today will be episode number one hundred. We're doing from the Wayne, Broner Garcia. Thank Should you, be Paul. fun. We'll take Thank you right you, to the Wayne. Thanks, guys. Thank you,